talking about growing food and processing it. Dinner is being fed. I'm Gene Baker, and welcome to Baker's Acres. I'd like to have you meet my son, Dennis. Hi, Mark. Hi. And my son, Robert. How do you do? Good, good. What's Baker's Acres? Baker's Acres, well, that's our family farm corporation. And we grow corn and soybeans, and we also raise swine. Is this the same corn that you feed to your pigs? Uh, yes, except that... Uh, the corn we feed to our pigs has been dried artificially, and you see it's taken off the cob. How does it grow? Well, when we plant this seed approximately the first week in May, we have to have good soil, sunlight, and moisture. That seed will represent this stalk, and the kernels are formed through a process of pollination. Mm -hmm. And this, these tassels on here, there's one for each kernel, that is the female part of the corn. I'll throw a little thing out for you. You will not find an ear of corn with an uneven number of rows on it. This way around? Right. Okay, I'll start here. One, two, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. He's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's fantastic. And that's just Mother Nature. Correct. Good enough for me. Can't argue with Mother Nature. If it wasn't for Mother Nature, we wouldn't have Corn to eat, which in turn we feed to our livestock. You put meat on the table, you have cereal. We get bread from wheat, which grows very similar to corn, only it's a, it's a smaller grain. So all our food that we eat, we rely on Mother Nature. <laughs> How old are they? They're 24 hours old. The sow moved into the stall two days ago. She had her pigs yesterday. They're a little uncoordinated yet, yeah. stagger around and aren't sure of their footing. Right. But they still have the ability to, to get up there and, and get some mama's milk. So they can see pretty good when they... Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. It seems like they hit the ground hungry. And, and the first, first instinct is to get around and, and get some of that milk. Yeah. You may not have known this, but pigs establish a pecking order starting almost at birth. What does that mean? Well, that means that the, the biggest, strongest pig will try to nurse off the forward portion of the sow's udder because that portion gives more milk. As we move down the udder, often the very smallest pig ends up at the rear portion of the, the udder. They're beautiful. Well, a little ornery. Uh, they aren't aggressive. They, they can nip you. They have very sharp teeth. And this is, a, this is a little gilt. That doesn't hurt? No, this is how we hold little pigs. Really? That's how you carry pigs from place to place. Uh, Unfortunately, you can only do it till they get so big, and, yeah. and, and size is a factor. But we do mark uh, the little pigs as uh, future females to go back into the herd. 
Now, these pigs right here are just a little bit older than the ones we saw in the last pen, right? Yeah, they're a couple of months older. These mm -hmm. will weigh about, oh, about 200 pounds right now. So they're just about ready to be on somebody's table here. Now, how do you get a pig that's real good for slaughter? What do you have to do to do that? You have to get a good feed? Well, good feed, and uh, part of that's in the breeding as well. And uh, as far as feed is concerned, why we grind up corn, soybean meal, and put all the vitamins and minerals and everything else that they need to grow. Is this real corn in here? You bet. Iowa-grown corn fed to Iowa pigs. Uh, <laughs> They're very inquisitive. They like to chew on you. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Now, these will go to the slaughterhouse, and they'll be cut up into different sections. You bet. Pork chops, pig feet. Ham. Ham. <laughs> bacon. You bet. In fact, we've got some chops on the grill. Do you really? You bet. Oh, I'm hungry. Let's go. Okay. Let's go. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll hold it for you, Mark. Try to take the other one. Iowa chops, Mark. There you go. Oh, here. Use that thing. <laughs> I'll tell you. Not too long ago, there was that one. Excellent. Thank you. Help yourself. Is this the corn that you grow out in your fields? Yes. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, Roman and I picked it about uh, 1 o'clock. Do you have any idea what else comes from corn? Or the gas hall? Iowa has really promoted gasohol, and, and they are making gas or the alcohol from corn. Really? What else comes from pigs? What else comes from pigs? <laughs> well, from the waste of pigs, you can make methane gas, and you can burn methane gas. They use parts of the pig to make medicines. Right. They use the skin of the pig to make jackets and gloves and shoes. And they use the different oils that come from the pig to make lipstick. Do they really? Yes, they really do. Uh, even marshmallows and jello use ground up pig hooves no. to give them the stickiness. So what it boils down to is you can use everything except the squeal. <laughs> they use those on car brakes. <laughs> that was a corn to <laughs> Okay, bacon, eggs, pancakes. And syrup. Right. Um, cocoa and fruit juice. Yep. Hey, don't forget fresh oranges. You know, on a long sea voyage, you can get scurvy. <sighs> For lunch, we should make sandwiches. They're easy. Yeah. So we need bread, tuna fish, ham, salami, cheese, lettuce, and tomato. All right, let's not forget butter and mayonnaise. Right. Yeah, we can catch some fresh fish for supper. Mm, yeah, with peas and carrots, potatoes and salad. Chocolate, cake and milk. Mm. Hey, wait a minute. Mm. I mean, we'll be okay the first few days, but I don't know how long some of these things will keep. Hey, you know, you're right. Without a refrigerator, the milk will turn sour. Yuck. Yeah, the eggs will keep, but I think the butter will probably go bad. Mm. And the lettuce and stuff will wilt. Hey, you know, if we're not careful, this could turn out to be a pretty rotten trip.
Rico, they have to really watch out for food rotting because it's so damp. So what do they do about it? Well, my grandmother puts a heat lamp in the pantry during the rainy season to keep things dry. We can't bring a lamp on a canoe trip. So what we need, then, is food that's dry to begin with, like... like crackers. And instant potatoes. Oh, not things like bread. Right. And powdered milk. Yeah. Hey, well, that's made from skim milk with the fat taken out. It's got less calories anyhow. Mm -hmm. Improving on nature, huh? Canned meats and vegetables. Uh-huh. Rock can't get inside a can. Hey. We better remember to pack an opener. Otherwise, we won't be able to. Right. Hey, did you ever read about Columbus? He carried salted meat and fish. That way, it kept longer. Yeah, because it tasted so terrible, no one wanted to eat it. Salt is a good preservative. I thought that was a bad word. Salt? Preservative. Well, there are good ones and bad ones. We need something to keep food from spoiling. The trouble is, we've left my natural homegrown Iowa pork chops too far behind. My grandparents still live on a farm, and even so, they get most of their food from the store. Yeah, I guess so. A lot of things happen to our food between the time it leaves the field and the time we put it on the table. You're right, because if we had to fix all our food from scratch, We'd never have time to go canoeing. That's right. <laughs> Today we're going to make bread. 7,000 loaves of it. We're in a bread factory in Connecticut where they use machinery to make bread. And while the machines make bread here, I'm going to make a homemade loaf by myself. I like a mixing bowl then. Yes, Lisa, this is one of our mixing bowls. The ingredients have now been thrown into this machine here, which in turn will be coming out very shortly in the form of a dough. So you mean when we're at home and we make bread, we have to mix it all by hand, but this right. machine does the very same thing? Right. This machine here holds 1,374 pounds of bread. Well, I would want to have to mix that. I'm with Maudine Nelson now, who's a nutritionist. Maudine, what does a nutritionist do? A nutritionist studies about what's in food and how it's used by the body. So we're able to tell you what good foods there are and what bad foods there are. I'll tell you a good food, bread. You mean bread is good for you? I thought bread was fattening. Oh, bread is very nutritious. It's a very whole food. It's been keeping people alive for thousands of years. And the reason why it's good is because of the wheat that the flour in the bread is made from. I'm sure you've seen wheat before, pictures of it. Mm -hmm. You've seen it in the fields, blowing back and forth. Well, each piece stalk of wheat has little kernels in it. Each little kernel and we divide it into three basic parts. The starch, which is in the center, mm -hmm. the bran, which is on the outside, and the germ, which is at the bottom of it. The germ is sort of like the yolk of the wheat, the way you know it. Like the an yolk. egg. Right. So when you make flour, you generally have ground the whole thing up, and you come out with what we call whole wheat flour, which is very nutritious because it has all the complete wheat there. So you mean those guys downstairs are making thousands of loaves of bread and they're using the same ingredients as we have here? The very same ingredients. Of course, a lot more of it. <laughs> <laughs> I would really like to make one loaf, but I've never made it before at home and I don't know exactly how to go about doing it. It's very simple. You'd be surprised. In fact, everything that goes into bread are really household ingredients that you probably have on hand all the time. First, we take milk, one half cup of scalded milk. What do you mean by scalded? That means that you heat it just below boiling. Okay. And to that milk, you add one tablespoon of sugar. Okay, okay. here's a tablespoon. Here's the sugar. Mm -hmm. Now, the sugar, what that's doing is helping to feed the yeast when it starts to rise. Now, you're going to add four teaspoons of butter. Four teaspoons. Just scoop it in like this? Scoop it in, take a spatula and scoop it out. Two. Can we use our fingers? Sure. That's what cooking's all about. Let's <laughs> really get into this bit. All right. Next, you're going to add the yeast. First, you pour the yeast into the bowl. Okay. This is what's going to help it rise. All right. Then you pour in a half a cup of warm water, and you stir until it dissolves. Okay. You can pour that now in with the milk 
and butter mixture. Well, stir that up a bit so it's all mixed as well. And now you're going to start adding your flour. Okay. You know, want to pour it through here. This is to sift it, and that incorporates air. And what's so good about having air in it? Well, when the bread is baking and it starts to heat, the air expands, and it gives the uh, texture of the bread more of a, a lightness. Now, once it's all thick, you'll start to knead it. Okay, now you take it out of the bowl. Dust your uh, hands with the flour so that the dough doesn't stick to your hand. And what you're doing is you're rolling the bread. Push it this way, bring it back with the heel of your hand. Push it, bring it back, and push it, bring it back. And this is a nice stiff dough because it's whole wheat. Why do you have to push it and then bring it back like that? It, couldn't you do it just any old way? No, actually, what you're trying to do is form gluten. That's one of the proteins in the flour. So now we shape it into a loaf? Okay, what you want to do to make it into a loaf is to flatten it out. Flat, flatten it out. We'll cover it with a damp towel. We'll let it sit for about 45 minutes or until it rises until it's about double in size. And then what? And then we bring it back to the board, punch it down, knead it just a bit, shape it into a loaf, put it in a loaf pan. Just pick it up and plop it in. Mm -hmm. Now make the seam go on the bottom. The seam goes on the bottom. Right. This is it. It got so much bigger. That's right, double in size. Now we bake it at 400 degrees. How long is this going to take to bake? About 50 minutes. I think I can hold out that long. <laughs> it's worth it. Ooh, it looks good. Oh, it's gorgeous. It really is. I'm proud. <laughs> First loaf homemade bread. You know, it's not going to be my last one. In the time it took for us to make this one loaf of homemade bread, these guys made 7,000 loaves. But that's okay, because they didn't have as much fun as we had. And they don't get to eat what they made. And I do. Pizza is the Italian word for pie. It's really another form of bread, sort of an open-faced sandwich. Looks pretty good. Mmm, it's good. Ever watch how a pizza is made? First, the dough. Flatten it. Stretch it. Then twist it a few times high in the air. Then the sauce. Some tomato sauce. in a nice spiral pattern. Throw on some seasoning, oregano and parsley, some mozzarella cheese, Put it in the oven and let it bake.
And when it's ready, serve very hot. Now that's a beautiful pizza. And what's the secret? Is it the dough? It's the sauce. It's definitely the sauce. Let's see. We'll store the sleeping bags back here. Oh, boy. Let's see. If we put you back here in the stern, and Lisa up there in the bow, we still have plenty of room here and here for more stuff. And where are you in all of this? <laughs> right here in the middle, having a nice ride. Oh, really? Man <laughs> overboard! <laughs> Here's some more stuff. Oh, great. Look at all this stuff. I mean, we're sunk before we even get started. You know, what we need is some raisins and some dried apples. It's a lot lighter, and it tastes just as good. You're right. We'll get dried eggs and dried peas. And habichuelas rosadas. Abby, what? Habichuelas rosadas. That's dried red beans. They're great with rice. Mm. Maybe we could get some of those ready-made casseroles. Yeah, I love frozen ravioli. No, we can't have frozen for this trip. But we can get some specially freeze-dried. <laughs> you know, now I know what they mean by convenience foods. You mean all those things that are pre-packaged so they're convenient to cook? Actually, what I meant was anything that's convenient to me. Nothing that spoils or breaks. It's amazing how many things you can do to food. Yeah. Hey, tomorrow we'll stop by and finish buying some of the rest of the stuff. Yeah, it's a good idea. Now, you see, that wasn't such a big problem, was it? <laughs> hey. Anybody know exactly how to steer one of these things? With the tiller, silly. Just like a sailboat. A canoe doesn't have a rudder or a tiller. Does it? No. Hey, does anybody here know how to paddle a canoe? Now that's a big problem. <laughs> 321 Contact is a production of the Children's Television Workshop. <laughs>